Hey there, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm looking at one that was requested by our Patreon supporters as a bonus play. This is Paladins of the West Kingdom. And actually the voting was tied between this and the unofficial solo variant for Great Western Trail, but I wasn't able to borrow a copy of Great Western Trail in time, and I got this from Amazon at a discount, so no disclaimer needed here, just gonna show you how the solo game of this one works. First I'm gonna give you an overview of the boards and components you're looking at, then I'm gonna go through the basics of play, and finally the actual playthrough itself. Feel free to use the timestamps to skip to any of those. And if you like our content, or if you'd like to vote on which bonus game I cover next, please consider supporting us on Patreon, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join the conversation on our Discord, and listen to our podcast every week. So first what you're looking at here is the player board. And it can look pretty intimidating, but what you're going to see are a bunch of actions you can take with outlines of workers, and you have to put either any color worker or the specific colors indicated to take these actions. The action spaces on the left tend to get me the resources I need for taking other actions, or they help me to make my engine more efficient by making actions cost fewer workers over here or by giving me little bonuses to the actions I take. Whereas all the action spaces on the right are my core victory point generators and they kind of go in little pairs. Like the ones top and bottom are sort of directly adjacent pairs that will help each other out. We can also have like kind of these like trifectas of actions. And a lot of these will give you little pieces as you take the action to either put on another one of the boards you'll see in a moment or to get a one-time bonus. You'll also see on the left here, very important, my attribute tracks. I've got uh, blue, which is influence, red, which is strength, and black, which is faith. And will those matter at all, those thematic names? No, they won't. <laughs> but taking these actions on the right will boost these attributes. And then in kind, I'll need higher attributes to take these actions better. So again, it's kind of like a give and take there. And then they also earn me a ton of victory points, potentially. Those are the little yellow flag numbers here. And finally, to finish up the player board, I've got my deck of paladin cards that the game is named after. And I just shuffle those up. I'll be drawing those to give me some special bonuses and also to give me a lot of the workers I'll use for the rounds. And then over here we have a board that looks pretty similar. This is the AI board. It's on the back of each of the player boards. They've got the same attribute track as me. They've got a lot of the same actions and the same pieces, but they have this little resource track. They don't keep track of individual resources. Instead, this track just advances and levels them up automatically. And the big thing is they've got this deck of scheme cards that will determine the actual actions they take. Kind of the uh, correlation to my paladin deck over there. Moving on up, we've got the left half of the main board, and we've got all these little townspeople we can recruit to potentially get some bonuses for us or some consistent effects. We've got these walls we can build, one of those right side actions I talked about. And very important, we've got the round track that we're going to seed with cards in a moment, although the AI card is going to get one first. And actually on that note, let's take care of that step quickly. During setup, you're gonna take these six King Orders cards. And these are each going to tell you to take one of the six actions on the right half of your board five times for bonus victory points. But for this initial draw for the AI, it's going to give them one of these little green workshops that helps them to do the action more efficiently. And this is the primary difficulty variant in the game. I can draw one card for easy, three for normal, or six for hard. And I'm sure I'll lose, but let's go for normal. Now I just flip these up and I put a workshop on each indicated space. So in this case, it's Absolve with the blue pottery, Commission with the uh, monks over here, and Convert on the right side there. Then I shuffle these six cards up again. The same ones might come up, and I put them on the three spots on the board I just showed you. And then I fill these other five spots with random King's Favor cards. And again, these will be marking the rounds, but also giving us new actions to perform. And finally, something special to the solo mode. I'm going to take these little five King's Favor cards for the AI and just lay them right over those spots. Oh, and I almost forgot, the AI will level up again when they see these first three King's Order cards on the first three rounds, so I put their workshops there to remind me. Finally, to finish up our little tour, we've got the right side of the main board. All these little action spaces are for either these uh, military barracks or for these monks that you saw earlier. As you take those right side actions, you get to fill these spaces for one-time bonuses. You also have this row of outsiders that you can either convert to your cause or attack and kind of kick out of your town. You've got the taxes, five coins in a solo or two-player game that will slowly come down and then have the Inquisition root at corruption. And speaking of that, you've got these corruption cards and these debts that can give you negative victory points unless you take care of them during the game. So with that said, let's jump right in and I'll kind of explain things as I go. 
So first, at the beginning of the game, I get to, but the AI does not, choose one of these people to go and become part of my little kingdom, which will give me the bottommost bonus for the rest of the game. And all of these ones are going to give me free workers or free coins or free uh, provisions when I take one of those right side actions that get you victory points. So quite honestly, this is very much a crapshoot because I don't know what the king wants me to do yet, which is going to give me some direction. So I don't know, I'll just grab the gatekeeper. That'll give me one coin whenever I fortify a wall. Okay, and then I'll fill in the gaps. And now we start the first round proper. So first we're going to reveal the first card here. Oh, awesome. Lucky for me, uh, fortifications are the first thing the king wants. Although uh, it's worth the least victory points if I build five of those. Four. The second king's order is worth six. The third is worth eight. That does mean that I'm going to put this workshop on the leftmost action space of the AI's fortification action. Which means now they can do it for two meeples instead of three. So it'll be a little easier for them to fortify and also try to get those four victory points. Okay, next thing at the start of each round is you're going to reveal two tavern cards. Oh my gosh, lots of criminals. So I'm going to pick one of these and the AI gets the other one. And this is going to give me my workers for the round. And the reason I reacted is purple workers are criminals who are wild, and they also get you these corruption cards that can give you free money. But they make it more likely that the Inquisition will come after you and you'll accrue some debt for negative victory points. So they're generally dangerous to get. Now with these two cards being so similar, I just have to ask myself, do I want a green or a blue guy? And looking at the actions, I kind of want uh, both, because fortifying is the one that would get me free gold, and I know the king wants, but that needs a blue and a green. Although... I might build a workshop, develop one, that would take away the leftmost spot, so then I wouldn't need the blue. So let's go for the green one. But I'm actually getting ahead of myself because I don't make that choice yet. First, I draw the top three cards of my Paladin deck, and each of them has three main things going on. Number one, they're going to give me two workers, just like the ones you saw in the tavern, and whites are kind of the blah ones who don't really fill any special spaces, so basically the worst. They're going to give me some boost to my attributes, just temporary ones, for this round, which might help me get some of my actions done. And finally, they'll give me a special power for the round. Like here, developing costs two fewer silver. Oh, that's a good one. That's the uh, <laughs> the action that lets me make uh, other actions cheaper. Ooh. Okay, or I can make attacking earn two silver. I don't think I'll be doing that. Or praying costs no silver, which is an action to free up an action space again. But yeah, I like the idea of uh, getting that developing one early. So you pick one to play for the round, one to go on top of your deck, one to go on the bottom. So who do I want to come the latest? I think the attacking one I can wait on for a while. And just to keep things organized, I'll have my uh, current paladin face up on top of the deck. And I didn't say, by the way, I start with three coins and one provision, which will be uh, paying for a lot of the actions I take. Now, he already has a green meeple, so I'm going to change my mind and get the blue tavern. And I can go ahead and grab all my meeple pool for this round. And let's talk corruption for a second. Each time I or the AI gains a purple worker, a criminal, we flip the top card over and we gain the indicated amount of coins. Beautiful. But those coins come from our supply of five taxes. And if that runs out, that's when the Inquisition comes looking for which of us has the highest number of corruption cards. And whoever does is going to get a debt. So I like the coin, not so much the corruption. And I got two of those guys and ah, no money. So it's not even worth it this time. And the AI doesn't care about which tavern card I gave them, except for purple meeples, because they're going to draw cards as well. And their first is two coins, and their second is nothing. So they just remove the two here. They never actually keep track of their coins. But they do advance their little resource tracker two spaces. That's going to determine which cards they're trying to go for in basically all of the tracks they can look at. And like I mentioned earlier, whenever they go past the edge, they're going to wrap back around and get a free level up of their lowest attribute. And we both hang on to these cards because, again, we're going to see who has the most, or ties, where we both get a debt uh, when the Inquisition comes knocking. So that brings us to the basic turn structure of the game, which is I always start a round, and I'm going to take one action of my choice, filling in the indicated little meeple spots. Although for Recruit, Hunt, and Trade, I can choose whether I want to fill just the leftmost spot or both spots for a better reward. And to go through these actions briefly, Conspire, I can put any meeple down. That's what the white outline means. It doesn't have to be a white meeple. And it'll get me in exchange a purple meeple, one of the wilds, and a corruption card, which could be more money. But as you saw, it could also make me more in danger from the Inquisition. I can also trade for coins, one or two, if I send both any meeple and a blue meeple. Same thing for provisions, one or two with a green meeple. I can develop for four coins, or this round, two for me, taking the leftmost building, it also gets me a meeple. 
and putting on the leftmost open spots of one of my special actions over here, which will permanently make it cost one less worker to uh, initiate that action. The last actions on here, pray if I put a black meeple or again a wild there and spend two coins, I can remove all of the workers from any other action space. So basically free it up again to do it twice because otherwise each of these can only be taken once per round. And then Recruit goes back to those townsfolk. If I use this one worker, I can send one of these people off on a quest, which means I just get this reward in the upper right. Uh, the little flags with colors show an attribute level up. Uh, this guy gets me meeples. This guy gets rid of a debt for me. And I have to pay the indicated number of coins, though, to do this, or take a debt card. So this guy costs me nothing, and then they get worse. But if I did two meeples for the same cost, zero, two more, I get them added to my supply as permanent boosts, like you saw at the beginning of the game when I got my little build a fortification, get a coin person. And that recruit is actually going to be my first action because I love getting free meeples. I'm going to put my white worker down here to just uh, send one on a quest. And I'll throw away this Abbot because he'll get me a black and white meeple, so I've just gained a worker for free, basically. Now, although we picked a tavern card for the AI just to get them corruption cards, they never care about the amount of workers or what color. They can use any color they want. The key thing for them is they get three workers plus the round number. So here they have four, next round they'll have five, etc. And all they do on their turn is flip the topmost scheme card. And in this case, it's a King's Order, a special one. They're going to look at the revealed King's Orders, so only the Fortification one, and they're going to do the rightmost one that they can execute. So here it'll just be the one they can do. And they fill their workers, so here they need two. And unlike me, they don't have to pay anything for these actions, they just basically happen. But they do need to have the right attributes. You'll see to place their first wall card down, they need to have a zero, which clearly they do. So they just draw the top wall card and flip it over. And these are the immediate bonuses they'll gain. Every Fortify action is going to get you one Strength. They'll also get one Victory Point at the end of the game and one free Worker immediately. So their Strength ticks up one point, and I'll grab them another Worker. All right, back over to me. I want to develop because, uh, remember, it's two less Silver for me this round. So I always need two Workers of any color, and I don't think I need the red guy this round. And I take the leftmost Workshop. I do get a free White Meeple uh, that's revealed there. And for now, I still don't know what else I need, so I'll just make Fortify cheaper. Back to the AI, let's see what they want to do. The Conspire action. So for me, that was the one that took one Meeple and turned them into a uh, purple guy. But for the AI, they're just going to get a purple card and then gain two more Meeples. Nice thing for me, though, is this will put them above my total of Corruption cards. They'll have three, I'll have two. And they did get two money, which is bad, but it also clears out the taxes. So they still move their resources twice. But now, because the taxes have been zeroed out, we pause for a second. We see who has the most corruption. It is the AI. They get a debt card, which is worth minus three victory points. But if they can flip it through a later action, it's actually worth plus one. So it's not always bad. They discard half their corruption cards rounded down. So that's the top one here. They're tied with me again. And all the taxes come back to rinse and repeat until they run out again for another Inquisition. Well, let's not forget they're up to four meeples now. So their turn's not ending anytime soon. All right, I want to be a little wacky and develop twice if I can. So I'm going to need some more money. I'm going to do the double trade action with a blue and a white for two. It gets me back to four, which I'll need for praying and developing in a moment. And the AI is going to keep on going until they run out of workers. They want to recruit. So it only takes one guy, and they only ever do the discard action. And you look at this for their preference. They want the rightmost recruit, but they're going to wrap back around if they're not available, because I already took that guy. Which means they're discarding the Watchmen for two more workers. Come on. Okay, now I'm going to take the Prey action. Remember, that's two silver to throw away. I don't get them back to my pool. They just go back to the supply, the people on one action. Now I can develop again, still with the minus two discount. The AI wants to convert one of the Outsiders. So this is one of the ones they got a bonus on at the beginning of the game. It's only going to cost two workers for them. And again, they're looking for the rightmost person, but then they'll wrap around if they need to. Or sorry, the person in the fifth spot. And for conversion, they need to have at least this much faith. But they currently have zero, so they're only going to be able to go for this guy. And for conversion, you only look at the bottom, so their strength is going to go up again. And these are end game scoring cards. So this one, the champion, is one victory point plus one more victory points for every king's order they completed. Those are three kind of goals you have. But each of them has a different way to earn you victory points if you convert them. Alternatively, like the recruits, you can attack them to get these immediate bonuses in the upper right and then get rid of them. 
All right, next I'm going to develop for minus two. doesn't matter who I use at this point because I'm going to use the green guy to fortify in a second, and uh, the purples are wild, so I am out of money, though. But I get to move over another one of these and get another white meeple. Now, here's the question. I could make fortify super cheap, or I could make something else only cost two. Because I can't just fortify over and over again. I'm going to have to raise my influence up to be able to get more walls down and collect a bunch more provisions. And you can kind of see here which actions go with which. So Fortify requires blue and gets you red. Attack requires red and gets you blue. That's why they're natural pairs, because they kind of boost each other. But if you want to bring in a third one, I could also do commissions with monks to get my blue. Oh, but then I would need a black. So I could do Fortify to do garrisons. So you'll see either you'll kind of do like these columns for pairs, or the top or bottom row tend to be kind of matching as well. But I'll be a simple man for now. I tend to like attacking because it's really cheap, so I'm going to uh, do that. All right, AI's still going strong. They want to do the Absolve action now, which also only costs them two guys. And they again check their stats. They need to have at least this much influence. They currently have zero, so they're fine. I would move my pots over and gain a bonus, but they just flip the leftmost one over. And it's going to gain them one faith, so their black token moves up to the one. I'm sorry, I forgot to move strength up to two from the conversion. And then first, they're going to get rid of one of these purple cards, Corruption. And then they'll either flip a debt to Paid, where it's worth a victory point, or get rid of another Corruption. So this is bad luck for me. They already got rid of that debt, and now they have less Corruption than me. Okay, my last action, I will clearly be fortifying. Although I could hold on to up to three workers into the next round if I wanted to. So my Fortify is similar to the AI. I'm going to draw the top card of the deck. But first, I need to have the correct amount of influence. I have zero, so that's fine. And I need to spend the indicated amount of provisions, which is the only one I have. I know, I guess I'm not done. I got some more meeples. Okay, so I'm going to gain one strength and a green and blue meeple. And that just sits up there. And let's not forget the gatekeeper I took at the beginning of the game. I'm going to get one silver for my trouble as well. And now what should hopefully be the AI's last action. So, attack. We will check. And we'll say, whoops, they only have one worker left and they need three. Whenever that happens, they draw an action they've already done, or they don't have sufficient workers to do it, or they don't have the right attributes. They're instead going to do the leftmost action still available to them, which is Prey. This is a nice one, because it doesn't really benefit them. What Prey does for the AI is it clears all of the workers away from the entire right side of their board. Which can be devastating early in a round, because then they can do all the stuff over again. But here, when they just ran out of meeples, is not a big deal at all. And then that also triggers them to reshuffle their discard pile into their action deck, their scheme deck. Otherwise, they never reshuffle unless they run out of cards. So they don't reshuffle at the end of the round. And after that, the AI is passed. I can get rid of all of their workers. And I'm now free to take the rest of my actions. But all I could do is conspire for purple, which I guess would let me attack. But they already attacked the only person I have enough strength to defeat. Or I could hunt for two provisions. Yeah, you know, that one actually seems decent because I do need more to fortify again. So let's go for it. And then I can pass and get rid of all of my workers as well to get ready for the next round. Now, a couple things do happen at the end of the round. We look at the two rightmost townspeople spaces and discard both of them. And we slide everybody else down and refill in. And let's see, the only one that kind of interests me right now is the defender. She would give me a provision every time I attacked. That'd be a nice little uh, combo there. And then in a similar way, we get rid of the two leftmost of these guys and slide the rest on down. And sorry, I shouldn't say the two leftmost, just these two leftmost spots if anybody's there. And now we jump right in with round two and you've basically seen all of the rules in the game. New King's Order uh, is converting, which means the AI is going to get a second workshop. They can do that for one worker now. Then we once again flip up our two tavern cards, <laughs> even more criminals. Look at our three paladins. We've got our free praying friend from before. Recruiting costs no silver. That's when you uh, get the little bonuses for these guys. Or hunting gains two additional provisions. I don't think I need that yet. I'd like to have the red for attacking, and there's definitely green. So let me go ahead and do the uh, recruiting costs no silver guy. And I like the provisions being early. Let's leave him on top and prayer on the bottom. And then, yeah, these cards are identical except green instead of white, and white are always worse. So I'll go with this one, and we'll each get a corruption card. For mine, I get one silver from the taxes. And the AI is lucky again, gets two. Which does push them over the edge, and they're going to raise up their lowest stat. And with it being round two, the AI will have five workers to start. And so let's see. I'd love to fortify and attack this round, and I think I have all the uh, stuff I need to do that. But then I, of course, also want to recruit while I have a bonus doing it. So let's uh, do that first. And I'm going to actually get that guy who gives me provisions whenever I attack. Seems to make sense. 
That would have cost me one silver, but it's free because of my paladin. Now let's hope they don't attack the guy I want while I'm napping. Oh, they probably are going to King's Orders. And the rightmost one they can do is the conversion that just got revealed. Which will only cost them one worker. Come on. And here they want to do the second guy. But, of course, they only have enough faith for the first guy. Which is the exact guy I wanted to attack. Oh, well, there we go. So we gain another strength from doing that. Yeah, they're going pretty hard on that strength. And actually, speaking of strength, they are strong enough to attack now. So let's uh, grab the other guy before they take the chance. So I'll use the purple as a red. I'll do a green for my other guy. And my strength is currently one. And to kill the weakest guy, I need three. But for every silver you spend, you can hire some mercenaries and gain plus two. So that will give me enough to kill him. And that's going to get me, oh, two coins from the tax. That's when they're like kind of the more bronzes color. And one influence. And you do keep these guys face down, both to track for the king's order if it comes up as the attack one, but also because uh, some of these other guys will give you victory points based on what clan you defeated. All right, AI's up again. Oh, and good. They're going to also attack, and I think I took away the only one they could. Beautiful. So because they have three strength and no one's available, they can't boost their stats. They instead have to, as I said before, go to this leftmost action. And they want a second from the left. So they're going to discard this peddler and get two more workers. Oh, well. Oh, and I almost forgot, my new defender gave me a provision when I uh, attacked. And yeah, it was going to be a very short turn for me this time. I'm going to fortify another wall. I do have the one influence, thanks to my attacking. I do have a provision. This one's just going to get me a strength and a single meeple. That was a cruddy one to draw. I'm yeah, pretty sure he's going to be held over for next round. And I get a coin from my gatekeeper. I'm liking how that's working, at least. AI's next action is to conspire again. They're going to get a corruption card. Only one coin. But the taxes only have one left. And they have three, so they're tied with me at least. Then they get two more meeples. And I'm just going to stop for my turn and declare a pass. So they're going to keep on going until they're out. Okay, recruit. They can't, so they're going to prey. And that'll free up the only one they've done, which is conversion. But also shuffle their actions back in. And, of course, they're going to convert again for a single guy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, they're obviously not. There's no one they can uh, afford to do. So they'll instead trade for a single coin. Okay, now they want to do a king's order. They uh, can't convert, so they're going to fortify. Yes, because they do have one. That'll cost them two workers. And they get a strength and just two more victory points. And then they want to conspire, which they can't So Let's go over the rest action. This gets them one resource plus one resource for each worker they didn't spend. So here they're just going to get two, so that'll be one, two, which will bump up their lowest stat or the one on top, in this case, their blue influence. And that's it. Let's clear up for the round. All right, let's see what our final king's order is. Oh, nice, it's attacking. So my little uh, bonus paid off there. Okay, one criminal, so I can give that to the AI and it'll probably trigger the Inquisition and they'll get it instead of me. So I'll probably be taking that one. Although, hmm, I won't have any reds to attack with. No, no, that's right, I saved one from last time, perfect. And let's look at our guys. Okay, absolving costs no silver. Uh, that's uh, one I'm not even really doing right now. Fortifying costs no provisions. That's a great one to save for later because I might like try to build two walls in one turn. And hunting gains two additional provisions. Um, I don't really care much about any of these. And I don't think I'm going to need a uh, black worker to pray. Um, I guess hunting gains two provisions and I'll try to get one meeple to do it. And then the fortifying one, I think I'm going to keep on kind of kicking to the top of the deck until I need it. And I'm giving the AI the one criminal, and uh, they got two, but yes, that will trigger the Inquisition. So they have the most corruption again, four. They're going to get a debt that they'll probably just get a victory point from, and they discard half rounded down, so two. So I'm ahead of them by one now. Hmm, let's see, I have enough coins to develop. I could develop attack again and then really just attack every round. Seems like it's probably a good idea. So yeah, let's start out there with my white worker and one of my random ones. That'll get me a green worker back, and yeah, I'm going to make attacking super cheap for me. Meanwhile, the AI will do the leftmost king's order. Oh, that's attacking. Yeah, it's not good for me. They're probably going to get the one I want, so that'll be uh, two workers out of their six. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I almost always forget this. Look, uh, the third round, you also put this king's favor card in their discard pile and turn up the first king's favor, which in this case is, wow, to a worker to gain a debt, but gain one of each of those three workers. I don't know if I can afford that. So they'll be attacking with two meeples. They want to attack the third guy over. But looking up, their strength is just shy of enough. They have four, and this guy requires five. So again, they're going to go all the way around to here and get this person. 
which will get them one blue influence and another worker. And since that is a criminal, they're once again going to get to potentially some more money and a corruption. Ah, beautiful. Now they don't get some money, finally. And there are three of these, so tied with me again. Now, in retrospect, I should have attacked when I had the chance, because now I don't have any money to attack the next guy up. I guess I'd better trade. Sure, let's do one on one and get two. Hopefully they won't mess with any other guys up there. Commission. Okay, they're going to put down a monk. That one's not too bad. So this little track up here tells you what their preferred actions are. But first we're looking at, uh, they get one blue, one influence. And we use these same values here to say which of these spaces they can go to. They can only afford the zero with their one faith, one black attribute. And that one they picked was to recruit or uh, get rid of one of these people. So they're going to get this for one meeple. And another corruption. Ah, but they got two more resources. But they're ahead of me again, so I at least like that part. All right, now that I've got the money, I'm going to uh, pay my one red worker to attack the guy I can. I have to spend one money to have enough strength. It'll get me an influence and two white workers. So that gets me up to two of each attribute. And let's see. Oh, AI's doing another king's order. Since they already attacked, the next one will be to convert, which will just take one. But I think... Yeah, so once again, they do not have enough faith. They would need four since I cleared out uh, the lower value guys. So nice, they're just going to recruit instead. And the one with the rightmost guy will just get them another uh, replacement worker. Hmm, I'd like to fortify again. Oh, I forgot my uh, free provision from attacking. But yeah, I'd like to fortify again, but I uh, don't have quite enough blue influence. I need one more. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I definitely could have attacked somebody else last time. I forgot about their attribute bonuses. But yeah, so this guy's giving me plus two blue, so I can certainly fortify right now. Does cost one provision, but my gatekeeper gets me one silver. And I get a strength and two more victory points. All right. Well, here, I guess I'll just take the one silver back I would have gotten from uh, not having to pay for the attack last round. That's uh, the best I could do to reverse it. All right, and... Oh, he's doing a garrison, which... Oh, that's the only action he doesn't have anything on, so that's great. It's actually going to use up all his workers. And this is uh, just like the monks. They're going to go on that little map, except he uses strength instead of faith, and it does raise his faith to two. So he's got uh, four strengths. So yeah, he's going to go for this and recruit again, which will get him two more workers. Yikes. As for me, I definitely want to hunt. I'll just go for one, and that'll get me three with my uh, hunter guard bonus. Uh, let's see. They want to recruit. They already did, so they're going to pray instead, which does open up all of these actions again. They could definitely do one. And for me, I think I'm going to hold on to these two workers because I can't uh, convert or do any of the other actions I might want to. So yeah, let's stay there. So we'll just finish up the AI's third round. Wants to fortify, which he can again. That'll use up his last two workers. Now, does he have enough? Yes, he does have enough influence. He needs three. He's got four. That's going to get him, geez, a lot of stuff. I wish I'd drawn this one. He's got a red. He gets to flip his second debt to giving him a victory point instead of losing it. And yeah, he'll always choose that option before he'll choose the next option, which would move his resources up to. All right, I'm definitely lagging behind, so not feeling great about this, but we'll keep trying. All right, to start round four, the AI gets another one to their discard pile, so they'll be, uh, be able to use those soon, which would take these actions. Ooh, and if I put a wild there, I get three white meeples. That's nice. Let's flip up our tavern. Okay, there is one criminal there, which I'm definitely tempted to do that with. Yeah, the taxes aren't about to run out, and he's one corruption card ahead, so I'll take that one, which means that won't affect him at all. And let's see, I've got garrisoning, cost no provisions, so I'm probably not doing that anyway. Converting costs no silver, and fortifying costs no provisions. And he would get me enough influence to definitely fortify this turn, so sure, let's grab him. Well, actually, yeah, I'm getting a red from the tavern, but I definitely want to attack this turn. But yeah, I'm still going to take him, I think. Okay, I do have to take a corruption, and <laughs> nice, too. Money, I love it. Although well, that does leave only one in the taxes. And I'm tied with the AI. All right, I don't think I have to rush to that action. So if I'm going to recruit and get this Acolyte for free, take away two of my corruptions, so again, I won't get one of those alone. So let's do that. Spend one of my blue guys. I have a lot of them. So that takes me down two below the AI. Speaking of them, they got seven workers. Let's see what they're doing. Absolving. And that'll cost them two. And they're certainly fine stat-wise. Okay, so they're going to flip that. Gain uh, one faith. Get rid of one of these. And then they don't have any of those to flip, so they can get rid of another one. I guess we're tied again anyway. 
And back to me, I think I'll attack while I have the chance. With my three attack, I can get this guy and one black worker, which I don't have any of yet. And let's see, they're going to attack themselves, okay. And they want to go for the fifth guy over, they've got five strength, which means they're going to wrap back around to the one, which is probably good for me, because yeah, they're still shy of actually being able to convert that guy if they try. That's one influence, uh, one worker, and one resource, that'll level them up. Ah, then they will have uh, four black, oh well. Yeah, their levels are drastically better than mine. All right, back to me. I don't want to waste my colored meeples. I'm going to go to that king's favor action. I get three generic workers for that one criminal. All right, and... Oh, they're going to pray. That'll shuffle their whole deck, which I guess I would have done anyway, because it just ran out. But it does give them access to attack and absolve again. All right, I've got a ton of people now. Well, let's go ahead and fortify. My paladin will make me have enough influence, and I don't have to spend provisions. Let's see, I get a strength, and I can either gain two money or get rid of a corruption. Getting rid of the corruption would make me below them again. So, sure. AI is freshly shuffled and gets convert, which, uh, that's right, they can do because they just rose to the high enough level. So you're gonna get this guy and a strength looking grim for me. All right, I guess I have to go into some of these other ones. I certainly can't convert anybody. Let's see, I definitely need more blue to get more buildings down, so I think I'll do a commission. That's going to cost me one provision. And I have a zero faith, but this guy gives me one. I mean, actually, the one doesn't make a difference. The only place I can go is here, so I'll just get two coins. But the important bit is my influence will go up. Back to the AI with their last two workers. King's Order. Ah, they'll attack again. Wait, can they? No, they have six strength, and the weakest guy has seven. So they'll just recruit. And they want the leftmost guy who's... God, going to get rid of all of their uh, suspicions. Now I have the most again. Let's see, I do have way more than enough money. I guess I should develop. So sure, let's do that. Spend four. Place one of these, getting another green worker. Christian is where? I guess Absolve is probably the best one, since I already uh, have a pretty high blue influence. And that'll also let me do it this round, because I don't have a black worker, but I do have a blue and two green, so that'll let me take care of that. Right, attack. We already said they can't, so their last worker is going to trade. Just get them one. That wasn't too bad, and they have passed. And yes, I will go ahead and absolve. That'll cost me one coin. And I have to take the leftmost one. That will finally give me a faith. That's nice. Let's see, I could do a free recruit, but none of them really interest me. Could do a prey action to clear up a space, but no, I don't really care about that yet either. I don't have, it. I don't have any loans to flip. So gosh, I guess I'll just gain another faith up to two. I'm going to keep my one green worker. All right, going another round. Uh, only three left. The king's order now is... A green guy will let me, without paying money, recruit somebody. Looking at our tavern. Oh man, I have to get two criminals or none. The taxes are about out, so if I get one, I'll pretty much definitely get a loan. But, you know what, whatever. I, I want to be able to use that action again. Let's do it. So the taxes are down to one. My first criminal gets me nothing. And my second criminal gets me two, which will make me take a debt for having the most. And also discard half, round it down, which is just one. So the AI has zero, I have two. And let's see, looking at my options here. Trading gains two additional silver. I already have a lot of money. Commissioning costs no provisions. Um, it only costs one anyway. Or garrisoning costs no provisions. I haven't even done that. Let's see, I would need three more blue to fortify this turn. So I guess I don't need that yet. I don't know, I guess I'll get the uh, trading cost, no additional silver one. Right, first things first, I really want to grab these free workers while I can. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. And I'm doing that first because that's the King's Favor card the AI is currently targeting. So if they drew a card, they would certainly grab it. Oh, but they're going to recruit. They have eight workers, by the way. I want the second from the left, which is an abbot, which is going to pray for them. And when they have no actions on the right, they just get one free worker. And then they also reshuffle their deck. All right, now for me, it might be foolish, but I want to convert, but I don't want to use my only red that I can attack with, so I'm going to develop again. Got, yeah, exactly enough money. And that'll get me a free blue guy, which is good. I didn't have any of them. Meanwhile, the AI is going to convert, but yeah, they're not going after the person I wanted, so that's okay. Going to get uh, this one and one more strength. Okay, here's the one that I want that I'm about to go after because they give uh, one victory point for each of those uh, symbols I've killed. I've killed two, and I'm going to try to kill a third in a second. And she gives a double strength boost, which is unusual, so I definitely wanted her. I was going to take my wild and one white worker. And yeah, my first conversion. There we go.
And that cost me no silver. The second one cost me one, two. You get the idea. My strength shoots up to six. And I'll see if they don't suddenly attack the person I wanted. Nope, they are commissioning. All right, so that's going to boost their influence again. And they're up to four faith. So they want to grab their favorite one here, which is another prey. And that will clear out so they can do those actions again. Speaking of actions, let's attack while I have the chance. And with my six strength, I can easily defeat her, getting me another influence and a blue worker. By the way, I have four attacks done out of the five I would need for the king's favor. And the AI is going to absolve. And they do have enough. Okay, so they'll gain one faith. And, okay, so they don't have any purple cards to throw away or debts to turn. So each time they don't, and they have to do one of those effects, they throw away one of the taxes instead. So that means the taxes are down to three. They're basically rushing until my shame is revealed. All right, let's see. I could uh, absolve. I oh, know I don't have enough money for it. Oh, but trading earns me two additional silver. So, I guess I can do both of those to get me four silver, and then absolve is my next action. Well, you know, I think I'm fine with just three. All right, King's Order. That means they're going to attack again. Although, wait, can they? Yes, they can get uh, the guy with seven strength. Here he is, another blue influence for them, and two resources. Nice job. I mean, well, for me, I'll go ahead and absolve. I guess I'll keep the uh, green guy. So it'll cost me uh, two money, and I'll flip over my only debt that I've gotten so far. Nice. They've got one worker left. I'll be passing, of course. Uh, conspire. Oh, never mind. Now they've got two workers. And they got a coin from their criminal they got. Since I'm passing, they'll keep on going. Uh, garrison. They don't have enough workers for that, so they're just going to pray and get everybody off again, which is uh, great because now they don't have enough workers to do anything anyway. And their last action. Okay, they're just going to trade, which will level up their faith again. Wow, their stats are good. All right, going into the last two turns, and I'm pretty sure I'm far behind. Like I said, I'm not super good at this game yet. Oh, one white worker would get me two wilds, although it also get me some uh, more suspicion cards. But then I could uh, kind of combo that. I don't know if I want that much suspicion. All right, for the tavern... Oh, interesting, very few criminals. Definitely want the red, though, so I think I'm going to go for that one and not give them the card. Right, let's see if that suspicion triggers it. One coin, now there's one left in the taxes. Second to last paladin. Ooh, attacking earns me two silver. That's nice. Oh, conspiring earns two silver. But the key thing is plus four blue. That would be enough to get me... Yeah, I could uh, actually get maybe two fortifications this turn. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go with him, even though I probably won't use the ability. Or, you know, maybe I try to attack a lot this turn, and then I'll play him as my last card. All right, first thing I want to do is convert again, because uh, this lady will get me a couple victory points, but also two strength. So I will need one of my wilds, or my only wild for now, right off the bat. And one coin, because of a spot I'm filling. But she pops over and gets my strength to eight. Hey, I'm actually above the AI for once. Meanwhile, they're going to do a king's order, which means they want to attack. And they prefer the leftmost, so they'll just go one to the right and get her... Oh, man, raising their influence up two. Now, you know what the heck? I see uh, somebody in the attack row that can throw away a uh, debt. So let's go ahead and get two criminals. See if the first one triggers. Yes, they do. So I'm taking a debt for having the most cards. But discarding half of my four down to two. And I get another card from my second criminal. They're going to take one out of the five taxes that are now there. Meanwhile, the AI will conspire. So suspicion card. Got two money and they are still below me. And they get two more workers. All right, next, I'm going to get a ton of workers again. Well, they are going to garrison. Love it to do these things that don't matter too much. They do gain a faith. They've got seven strengths. They're looking up here. And uh, yeah, they don't have any debts to turn, so they're going to do a prayer again. Means they can garrison again. Uh, go right ahead. Meanwhile, I'm going to use one red worker to attack. I want to get this guy that lets me throw away my debt and get me an influence. And that is throw away. I don't get to flip it for the one victory point. And I'm pretty sure I forgot to do this a few turns ago, but I should have gotten a provision from my defender. All right, and AI is going to convert somebody. Oh, darn it, they're going to convert the one I was just about to kill. That'll get them a one strength. That's also their fifth one, so they're good for the king's order. All right, well, let's see. I could commission to get enough blue to fortify, so let's do that. So that's one, two, and I do have to use my other wild. It's going to cost me one provision. 
I'm at a two faith plus one for my paladin. So I can only get over here. I don't care about getting rid of the suspicion cards. Or do I want a meeple or some money? I think I want the meeple. All right, and they're going to absolve. Okay. I'll certainly get rid of all their suspicion and raise their faith up. Yep, so no uh, debts to get rid of. They just get rid of both of these. Which I don't really mind. I find if you give them too many debts, they tend to just get victory points with them. Hey, sorry for the sudden cut here. I lost the end of round six somehow in filming. So I'll summarize a bit. The AI happily didn't do very much, but I was able to get a criminal by conspiring. I luckily didn't get uh, money to trigger getting the loan. And that gave me somebody to pray so I could attack a second time, which got me some money from my paladin. And I also got some provisions and hunted. So I've got two guys going in. Hopefully I'll have enough provisions to fortify twice. Um, attack at least a few more times. I've definitely got that goal met. And just to show you what emerged at the beginning of the final round, round seven. We've got this action, a blue worker and a provision to get a uh, building, a workshop out, or some workers. Unless I get enough extra provisions, I don't think that'll happen. And the final card's no wild, so I'm definitely going to grab the one with some variety and a uh, red for attacking. Now for these guys, it doesn't matter too much. They all get the guy who says praying costs no silver, because I don't really need the stat boost for anything. All right, I don't have to jump into these yet because uh, the ones I want are not threatened right now. He's uh, trying to get this one. Actually, you know what? Who am I kidding? I want to get these guys right away. I'm sure this time this will trigger. Oh, still no money. Okay, there we go. That's enough to trigger me getting a loan for having the most. I'm going to discard a two back down to three. All right, the AI's got 10 workers. Let's see what they get into. They're going to fortify first. That's okay, though. They should, unless they pray, not be able to get the fifth one that'll earn them the victory points. Okay, they'll gain a strength. God, they're going to get so many victory points from those. And then uh, they want to get rid of a purple card. They don't have any, so they're gaining uh, two resources. All right, while I have the chance, I'll go ahead and grab uh, three of those guys. There we go. Back to the AI. Going to commission. That seems okay, except it's raising their stats so high. Come on. And he can go all the way over here. Oh, no, he could pray, couldn't he? Yeah, and that's going to be his first choice. Darn it. All right, so he might have the chance to fortify again. As for me, let's go and recruit with one of my white meeples. Because I saw this nice lady's going to cost me nothing. Get me the meeple right back and a provision, so I'll have enough to double build the uh, fortifications. Back to the AI. A king's favor, and they want the rightmost spot. So they're going to do this, and uh, they can't gain workshops besides the ones that they get for free at the beginning of those uh, early turns. They don't spend resources, so they're just going to get two meeples. I might as well go ahead and do my fortifications. Well, should I attack first? I guess, yeah, because that actually interacts with the enemy. I don't get any of these guys for free. I don't really need the provisions. Oh, here we go. I'll get the one that gets rid of my debt and uh, has a victory point for the type I like. And that gets me another provision, so I guess I have more than I need. AI is going to convert. They already have all they needed, so I guess that's just kind of icing on the cake. They want to get the fifth guy over. who They can afford, so they'll just get a plus one strength. Again, there's tons of victory points for them there. Okay, so let's see. I want to fortify. I want to fortify again. I want to pray. I want to, I think, probably develop with all my money and get a commission. That's about, I think, all I'll be able to do. So let's go and do the first fortification, see what it gains me. Does cost me three of my seven provisions, although I'm getting a money for it. Okay, and one strength. Oh! Oh man, I already threw away my debt, didn't I? So I guess I'll just get two money. All right, back to these guys. Gonna attack. Yep, they can do that. They want to attack the fifth guy, so they'll go around to the sixth person. They're not strong enough, though, so they'll wrap back to him. Uh, one worker. They don't have any suspicion, so I'll get rid of attacks. Getting a blue, it's almost at max, and yeah, worker. All right, let's go ahead and pray for free because of my paladin, and we'll take off the fortification. We'll get the final one there. All right, hopefully they'll slow down here. Recruit. They want the fifth person. But they bounce around. Oh, come on. I gave him a blue level up. Give me a break. All right, as for me, I'll go ahead and do my last fortify. Getting me another gold. Ooh, nice. Two strength. That gets me right to the top, so I made the 20-point mark as well. Does leave me with just one provision. All right, do something minor like garrison. King's order. Uh, they already converted, they already attacked. No, they're going to fortify again, jerks. That was a four victory point swing. And they get a strength. That's another three. That was like seven victory points and two more workers. Wow. Not that I think the score is going to be close anyway, but now it definitely won't be.
Alrighty, I'll go ahead and develop. That'll get me a free blue worker. This is gonna cost me four money, but gosh, I got a lot. All right, and King's Favor. They want the right one, they'll wrap around. So that one is just gonna get them uh, three meeples and a debt. If I'm lucky, they won't be able to pay it off, but they got three meeples, so I'm sure they will. Okay, I'm definitely gonna commission with these guys, then I'll have two meeples left for something. That'll cost my last provision. And with my Paladin, I actually have six. So I don't need to flip a debt. I could convert, but all these people are pretty much worthless to me. But, you know, I think I can attack again. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, this red meeple. You'll see how I can do that in a second. All right, man, just slow down somehow. King's favor. Uh, the only one left is uh, getting a recruit for free. They want the rightmost. They wrap around. They're going to get a meeple and free level up. So here's my plan. I can absolve and then use it to uh, free up a space and do attack again. So it'll cost me two money. I'll go ahead and do that and that'll get me a faith, which is worthless, unfortunately. All right, King's Order. They've done all of them. So they're just gonna pray, which unlocks them all again, of course. All right, in my last action for the game, I'll attack. And I will go ahead and spend money to have enough. Oh no, never mind. I'm super strong now. I can definitely defeat her without spending anything extra. So she'll give me a provision. I get a provision from my defender. I get a white meeple. I'll try to find something to do with him. And a blue, which gets me up to a higher level. Nice. All right, AI. Recruiting. They already did, so they're just going to trade for one resource. What can I do with you? Uh, hunter trade for one. I guess that's the best. Yeah, because all the king's favorites are taken. That does get me to one more victory point, though, because it's for every three, and I've got six now total. King's order... Oh, they actually can do one now. They can attack again. Yeah, and there's definitely some people to attack. They want the second one. They'll go over to here. Uh, blue can't go any higher, so I don't think they get anything. So we just get two resources. And King's Order again, of course. Uh, what do they want to do now? They want to convert. And there is one person left. Okay, and they get their strength to the highest. Of course they do. And Fortify, they can't afford it, so they'll conspire. Oh, that gets them two more guys. And one of these for two more money, which raises this up. Uh, yeah, okay. Still going. Commission. Oh, sure, they can afford it. <laughs> and, of course, they can reach the spot where they can flip their debt. All right, well, let's do my score first. I don't think it's going to be close. So I had one paid debt for one. I get a victory points for cross, and I forget what these I represent. Let's see, I defeated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So only one person didn't match. So that's uh, seven victory points. Eight with that. Nine, ten with my resources. Um, Eleven and twenty-four, forty-four. Forty-five. And then up here, fifty-one. And I got two of these three, so fifty-five and eight would be sixty-three. And I forgot my one wall. Sixty-five. I don't think I missed any there. Yeah, now they got a few things going on. So let's see, they did not get to a victory point spot here or here or there. They got one from their fortifications. 41, 54, I mean, I'm pretty much already done just from that. They got all of the king's favors, so that's 64, 72, they already got me. And then let's see, that's four more, so that's 76. That's... <laughs> Uh, three more, that's 79. That's two more, that's 81. Um, they're always worth one, so... And I guess he counts himself, so that's uh, two more, that's what, 91. Uh, four more again, 95. 96. And... 98. Oh, let's not forget these, so... 101. <laughs> All right, so either I messed up or uh, that was a really good score for the AI. So there you go. That was Paladins of the West Kingdom. Definitely not my type of game, but I respect the design. Uh, there's some cool things going on here. I don't necessarily love playing against the AI, but that might just be my own inadequacy uh, showing. <laughs> thanks to our patrons for voting for it, and thanks to everybody else for watching. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.